inspiration. <laughs> I didn't write a song, but uh, I did have an inspiration. But uh, I recall I've been wanting to do this for years, ever since um, Johnny Cash died of complications associated with diabetes back in September, in fact, September 12, 2003. Um, he actually died of respiratory failure as a complication of diabetes, uh, which is, a, so I wanted to bring that up uh, within context of today's discussion for actually three different reasons. Um, the, but before I get talking about that, I want to actually show you a tribute to uh, Johnny Cash and one of his last songs prior to his death that was entitled Hurt. And, um, and then we'll, we'll kind of debrief and talk about how it relates to the topic today. It's a very powerful song because it's really the words of somebody who was in a lot of pain. A lot of pain. He just lost his wife for 35 or so years in uh, just a few months before. Uh, actually, he was, he was losing her. He, she, she had heart disease. But um, he had nerve pain and nerve damage associated with diabetes. He had multiple complications associated with diabetes. He'd had diabetes for many, many years, and his daughter finally came out after his death and talked about the struggles that Johnny Cash went through in, in dealing with his blood sugars and, and, and talking about the a room full of regrets, so to speak, of uh, if, he could, if he could start over again, as he discussed in this, in this uh, song. Uh, he, would, uh, he would definitely do it a different way. So the good news is that we have an opportunity to really start again, to, 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 to literally fix this. This, is, this isn't something like what Johnny Cash thought. He believed that there was it was, a, it was a, a disease that you couldn't really do anything about. That, that was his belief, and that's the, the belief of many people up until recently, and unfortunately, we healthcare providers have have allowed, uh, have even encouraged that perspective that once you have diabetes, you're always you're always <laughs> going to have diabetes, and it's always and it's just going to keep getting worse and worse and worse. And you know, we'll just help you. You know, we'll hold your hand through the process. But essentially, the perspective was that it's a terminal disease. It's a slow dying disease. It's a progressive disease that continues to get worse and worse. And that's not true. It doesn't have to be that way. And, and as, I, as I've read about Johnny Cash's experience, he would frequently say, I deny my disease. In other words, he didn't want to let it get him down, so he wouldn't think about it. He knew it was there, but he didn't want to think about it. Because he didn't think there was anything he could really do about it, and so he just denied it. And in, in, in from a practical standpoint, but uh, one of one of my favorite statements that maybe some of you have heard before from, by Norman Cousins is, "Don't deny the diagnosis, but defy the verdict." The verdict, the many, the, usually the reason we deny something, oh, I don't have this, or I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about it, you know, because it just upsets me. Right? That's usually an excuse for not thinking about it. It just obsessed me so much. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to even think about it. I want to stay positive. But for many people, staying positive is just ignoring the reality of what is progressively destroying our bodies. And, uh, and, and we, can, we can focus on the reality of the situation. We can recognize what the problem is but then address it head on and seek to, to literally reverse the prognosis. See, the prognosis in diabetes, if you're, if, if you're going to just follow the path of the typical diabetic or pre-diabetic individual, is that it will, it will lead to heart disease. 80% of the time, premature death due to heart disease, right? And it'll... Uh, it'll cause kidney problems, eye problems, nerve problems, and so forth. And so it will seriously impair or create significant dysfunction as we age. That's, that's the, the path of least resistance. That's the normal path. But the good news, and now what I wish Johnny Cash had understood, is that he had, 
he had the potential to fully get that under control so it would not lead to the chronic deterioration of his body. And also, combined with another neurologic disease that he was eventually diagnosed with, that was similar in some respects to Parkinson's, only rarer. Uh, but, you see, he, again, he believed that there was nothing he could do about it, so he was just going to, you know, go to work every day, and he did great stuff, he did great work. He put all his energy in his work, but if you just put a fraction of that energy to paying attention to some of the things that Kristen just discussed, the simple things, making sure you're following the strategies that we know work now, the after meal exercise, the, the really watching the nutrition, following Dr. Furman's book, Eating for Health, to literally reverse that process, to give the body what it needs to, to help get the body um, reverse the pathway of both the neurologic disease and the metabolic disease that were combining to destroy him.